The evolution of our species is one of the most intensely studied and debated areas of modern science. For more than a century, Neanderthals were locked in a stereotype. Powerful hunters with big brains but narrow lives, bound to small bands, limited cooperation, and clumsy communication. That image has now been broken apart. In just the past few years, fresh archaeological and genetic evidence has overturned the old assumptions. What we see emerging is not a caricature of a failed cousin, but a species with family bonds, structured social exchange, and the capacity for communication more advanced than anyone once believed. These revelations force us to rethink who they really were and why their story ended. Thousands of years ago, Neanderthals roamed the icy plains of Europe and Western Asia. For most of the 20th century, scientists painted a stark picture of these ancient relatives. They had large brains, almost as big and sometimes bigger than our own, but intelligence was measured in more than raw brain size. Evidence of symbolic behavior such as art, body ornaments, or wide social networks seemed absent from the archaeological record. Instead, scattered sites suggested that Neanderthals lived in small, isolated family groups, bound together mainly for survival in harsh Ice Age environments. Their diet was reconstructed from nitrogen isotopes preserved in bone, and the results were striking. Neanderthals appeared to be hypercarnivores, consuming meat at levels more comparable to wolves or lions than to humans. They were imagined as hunters who depended almost entirely on big game, with little evidence of variety in their food sources. Their tools, too, reinforced this view. The Mausterian toolkit, primarily stone flakes and scrapers, was regarded as effective but unchanging, showing little innovation across tens of thousands of years. From this evidence, the old story seemed airtight. Neanderthals were painted as near carnivores, dependent on mammoth, bison, and reindeer for survival. They endured the elements, but they did not adapt beyond them. By contrast, early Homo sapiens were framed as the species of abundance, mixing plants and animals into their diet, forging symbolic traditions, and weaving wide social networks. That diversity and connectivity were seen as the decisive weapons that allowed humans to spread, cooperate, and ultimately drive Neanderthals into extinction. For decades, this contrast with Homo sapiens as cultural pioneers and Neanderthals as evolutionary dead ends shaped textbooks, documentaries, and popular science. It was a neat dichotomy, persuasive and easy to teach. Yet as new discoveries began to surface in the past 15 years, this tidy narrative started to unravel. The first major crack in the old myth came not from bones or tools, but from dental calculus, fossilized plaque. In 2011, Amanda Henry and her colleagues published a groundbreaking study in PNAS based on samples from Neanderthal teeth at Shanidar Cave in Iraq and Spy Cave in Belgium. Under a microscope, they identified starch grains, phytoliths, and plant fibers, direct evidence that Neanderthals ate plants. Crucially, many of these starch grains were damaged in ways consistent with cooking. The grains were swollen, fractured, or gelatinized, signs that they had been boiled or roasted before being eaten. This meant Neanderthals were not only collecting plants, but deliberately preparing them for easier digestion. Subsequent studies deepened the picture. In 2018, Karen Hardy's team analyzed dental calculus from El Cedrone Cave in Spain, finding traces of legumes, wild grasses, pine nuts, and even medicinal plants such as yarrow and chamomile. These themes suggested dietary knowledge that went beyond nutrition into pharmacology. By 2T21, a team led by Salazar Garcia at Chagirskaya Cave in Siberia combined dental calculus analysis with isotopic data, confirming that plants played a consistent role in Neanderthal diets, even in the harsh northern latitudes where plant resources were less abundant. The implications were profound. Plant cooking required planning, control of fire, and transmission of knowledge. It demanded a social context in which foods were gathered, prepared, and shared. These tiny microfossils in fossilized plaque revealed not just food, but a hidden world of Neanderthal ingenuity. 
The next breakthrough came from genetics. In 2022, a landmark study sequenced DNA from Neanderthal remains at Denisova and Chagirskaya caves in the Altai Mountains. Among the individuals identified was a father and his teenage daughter, the first direct evidence of a Neanderthal family unit. This discovery moved Neanderthals from abstraction into intimacy. For the first time, we could glimpse not just bones, but kinship. Further analysis suggested that Neanderthal groups were small, likely numbering between 10 and 30 individuals. This size estimate aligns with hunter-gatherer bands but highlights their demographic fragility. The genetic data also indicated a patrilocal residence system. Females tended to leave their birth group and join their partner's community. This social arrangement mirrors patterns still common in many human societies today, including pastoral and agricultural groups. It suggests that Neanderthals practiced structured social exchange, strengthening bonds between small scattered communities. What emerges here is a picture of family ties, kinship rules, and marriage exchanges. Not just survival in isolation, Neanderthals organized their social lives in patterned ways that were distinctly human. Evidence of Neanderthal compassion has long been visible, but recent excavations have brought it into sharper focus. One of the most famous examples is Shanidar I, discovered in Iraq in the 1960s. This individual lived into his 40s despite multiple debilitating conditions, a withered arm, blindness in one eye, and significant hearing loss. Survival under such conditions was impossible without sustained group care. Renewed excavations at Shanidar in 2020 revealed burial clusters suggesting deliberate placement of bodies and possibly the inclusion of flowers. While debated, the consistency of burials across time implies a cultural pattern. Ritual treatment of the dead suggests memory, symbolic thought, and community identity. By 2023, additional isotope and dental wear analyses revealed evidence of shared food preparation and knowledge transfer. Cooperative hunting of large game required communication and coordination. Sharing cooked plant foods implied group-level planning. These were not merely survival strategies. They were signs of deep social bonds. For decades, the question of Neanderthal language was framed as a yes or no debate. Did they speak like us or were they silent? Anatomical evidence now points decisively toward the former. The hyoid bone from Kabara Cave in Israel, discovered in the 1980s, was long considered suggestive of speech. In 2021, biomechanical modeling confirmed that its internal structure endured stresses consistent with vocalization, not just swallowing. At the same time, auditory reconstructions revealed that Neanderthals could hear frequencies in the same range as modern humans, including consonant-rich sounds. In 2023, Researchers concluded that they almost certainly possessed a complex vocal communication system. The conclusion is striking. Neanderthals had the anatomical tools for language. Their communication likely combined spoken words with gestures, producing a system of interaction far more nuanced than earlier stereotypes allowed. Perhaps the most radical challenge to the old image comes from Protinkum from art and symbolism. In 2018, uranium thorium dating of cave paintings in La Pasiega and Ardales caves in Spain pushed their age to over 64,000 years, well before Homo sapiens arrived in Europe. If correct, this means Neanderthals painted the earliest known cave art. Other symbolic artifacts add to the case. At sites across Europe, eagle talons have been found modified in dependence. Pigments were applied to shells and bones. These finds suggest not just utilitarian survival, but symbolic thought, marking identity, memory, or ritual. While some of these dates and interpretations remain debated, the cumulative evidence points to Neanderthals as meaning makers. They were not merely enduring the Ice Age. They were shaping their social worlds through symbols and art. The brutish image of Neanderthals has shattered, but what replaces it is not clarity. Instead, it is a battlefield of interpretations. Every major discovery today sparks a sophisticated scientific struggle over their inner world. One of the most contested fronts lies in the caves of Spain, where red ochre paintings dated to 64,000 years ago 
are cited as evidence of Neanderthal art. Some researchers view these works as proof of symbolic behavior, but skeptics offer other explanations. They suggest that a ghost population of early Homo sapiens could have created the paintings and then vanished. Or they argue that the dating of the calcite layer above the pigment does not absolutely prove when the art was made. At Shanidar Cave, the evidence of burials and long-term care for individuals with severe injuries has been seen as a story of compassion and ritual. Yet another interpretation is far colder. According to some scholars, caring for the elderly may have been a pragmatic survival strategy and natural soil processes, known as taphonomy, can sometimes mimic deliberate burial. The debate over language runs even deeper. Anatomical studies suggest Neanderthals had the physical capacity to produce speech. The hardware was there, but the long stagnation of their tool technology remains a puzzle. This archaeological silence has fueled arguments about the software of their minds. Some propose that they may have lacked the spark of abstract language, the element that allows rapid innovation and cultural acceleration. This is the modern conflict over Neanderthals. The question is no longer about their strength or their ability to survive the Ice Age. It is about the very nature of their consciousness. Were they truly another version of humanity with minds that worked like ours? Or were they an almost perfect copy, missing a single foundational cognitive element that made all the difference? The old tale of Neanderthals as solitary meat eaters no longer holds. Archaeology and genetics now paint them as more complex. Hunters who also cooked plants, families bound by care, and voices that may have carried across Ice Age valleys. Yet for all their resilience, they disappeared while Homo sapiens endured. That mystery lingers like an unfinished chapter. Maybe their groups were just too small to survive sudden change. Maybe their networks never stretched far enough to share knowledge across continents. Or maybe the real difference was more subtle. The way ideas spread faster among our ancestors, snowballing into better tools, richer art, and strategies that kept us alive. So here's the question that still hangs in the air. If Neanderthals were so much like us, why are we the ones still here? Drop your take in the comments. I'd love to see where you stand.